In this video, I'm just going to speak briefly about the fact that the post hoc comparisons conducted via Fisher's LSD and SPSS are based all on separate standard error terms. And so you can see that the standard error for the comparison between pretreatment and post treatment is equal to 3.60. And then when pretreatment and follow up are compared, the standard error is 4.951. It's a bit anomalous to see that. And that's certainly the one way between subjects ANOVA. When the Fisher's LSD is done, the standard errors are all the same. And that's because SPSS uses a error term that is from the ANOVA, which is technically the power of doing a, an ANOVA in the context of multiple comparisons, is that there's a pooled error term used. I'm just pointing out that there is not a pooled error term used in any of these comparisons. And this is a little bit of a limitation, I think. And it's a good idea to realize the connection there. There might actually be a way of, I suspect there is a way to do it fairly easily. We just need to use this mean square error to derive a standard error term. And I just want to briefly point out that if you do all the paired sample t-tests, instead of doing the Fisher's LSD, you could technically do all the paired t-tests and then post-treatment versus follow-up, the three paired t-tests, and you get the same results. You can see that t values are, you don't actually get the t values up here, but you get the, the p values, and you can see that the difference is nothing in terms of the p values. So time one, time two is zero, 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 time one, three is zero, zero, one, and then time two and time three is 0 0.904, and here you get the same p values, 0 0.000, 0 0.001, 0 0 and 0 0.904, all based on standard error terms that are unique to each comparison, not a pooled error term. Just a slight technical detail to point out, and yeah, that's the end of it. For the stats nerds out there, you'll appreciate that sort of thing.